Welcome back to the workbench, everyone. I hope everyone had a uh, happy and safe holiday season, uh, happy new year and all that. It is uh, 2018 now, and we're going to start the year off. We're going to kick it off by taking this little Bluetooth speaker apart. This is a rechargeable unit. Uh, you can get these uh, fairly inexpensive. They are, I don't know, they run about like 10 bucks or so. You can find them on eBay, I think uh, even Amazon. This was actually lent to me by a friend who uh, bought it, and he wasn't too impressed with it, and I've kind of messed with it a little bit myself. And yeah, the, the sound quality is just really not that great. And there's a, a few little other little oddities with it that we're just going to kind of take a look at. It's got uh, some buttons up here, like for phone. M. I'm not sure what the M stands for. Oh, I think that's mode. It's also got like a play pause button right there, like fast forward and like skip track, like or go to the previous track, you know, whatever. In the back, we also have a USB port here. Then we also have a micro USB here that's for charging, an auxiliary input, on and off switch, and a small micro SD slot there so you can play stuff off micro SD as well. So, uh, my friend that lent me this, he already kind of opened it up, he, he said, and uh, I'm not sure entirely what's all in it, but let's uh, go ahead and take a look. It's actually funny if you turn this thing on. Let's listen to the voice prompts. If I could uh, hit the switch here. There we go. We see a little... Bluetooth mode. So that right there is in Bluetooth mode. I think if we hit the M button here, we can go to a different mode. Ready mode. Ready. Bluetooth mode. Okay, so we're just going between a Bluetooth mode there and a radio because there's a, nothing else plugged in. I'm going to take a little SD card and just plug it in the back here and see if it changes what it says. I don't know if I have that upside down. Maybe I have that upside down. It's not going in. There we Play go. by TF card. Ready mode. Okay. Bluetooth mode. Play by TF card. Ready mode. Oh, that's funny. So, uh, mode. there's no music on that SD card, so maybe that's why it's uh, skipping it. But <laughs> when I went to the mode for the to play off the SD card, it just uh, went back to radio mode. No idea why. But anyways, uh, we're just gonna. Take this apart, see what's inside, uh, and um, yeah, so the other little thing about it is that my friend says that it apparently only plays in mono. It's got two speakers, but uh, audio is just mono, so we're going to see if maybe there's uh, something they did to, you know, just have it in mono, or if any little modification can be done to actually get it to play in stereo. I don't know, but we'll see. So, anyways, to start taking this thing apart, this grill here in the front has to come off, so this just kind of lifts up, you can just use like a little pick or something, a little scribe, pull on that metal mesh, and it will pop out, because it's just inserted into like a slot that's all around that, this red plastic part here. Oh, and that's another thing, you can get these in like various colors, and for some reason, like depending on the color you're looking at, like the, the price varies, I guess uh, some are maybe a little bit more, more popular than others, and they're cheaper, I don't know. But anyways, so there's a metal mesh, there's uh, some cloth stuff here just to, I guess, kind of block out the, the view of the speakers a little bit more so you don't see them as much. Let's see what it looks like if we take this off. So, yeah, that makes that, that big lime green centerpiece there kind of stand out a little too much. So I guess that's why they put that little piece of cloth on there. So that's that. And then we have a few screws here. We got one, two, three, and four. And then a couple... Uh, four more in here in the centerpiece. This is not actually a speaker. This is like one of those, um, I'm not even sure what these are called, but it's it's basically just like a the rubber surround. The metal, the middle piece here is like uh, metallic. It's kind of like weighed. It's supposed to kind of react to like the, the bass to kind of give you a little bit more of a, a bassy sound. And I'm wondering if maybe the reason why this thing doesn't sound so great, it just sounds... Uh, kind of like flat like there's really like no low end sound so I'm wondering if maybe because there's like a lot of openings here and a lot of vents that this isn't working properly like some of the other somewhat more expensive Bluetooth speakers that I've seen like say some like Joe Biel brand ones or uh, Logitech they also have these in them but pretty much like the whole thing is sealed 
so as the speakers, you know, are, are like like bumping and everything, this uh, the piece. I don't know. I gotta look it up. I gotta. I, I at one point I did know what these are called, but now I I can't remember for the life of me. <laughs> Anyways, it does react and it does help, like kind of uh, bring up the kind of like the the low ends, and it just it it sounds a lot cleaner. But yeah, this one just seems to be like all highs and nothing in the lows. So. Yeah, let's uh, let's get a screwdriver here. All right, so that's all four of those. I think this should come up. Oh no, there's an. I don't know. No, that's not holding the plastic though. So I think this should just come up. Maybe. Okay, it's looking like maybe these screws have to come out too, because I cannot like it comes out a little bit from the sides, but then the center just doesn't want to release. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out as well. Okay, so yeah, this this had to come out to be able to get a couple more screws in there, and it's actually kind of surprising how well this green piece fits inside of the cutout that's uh, made for it in this uh, the red part. Because I mean, there's barely like any gap like all the way around it. So that one's actually like I guess pretty pretty well fit there. That's a little surprising for being so cheap that they got those uh, tolerances are pretty close. Okay, I do believe this should come out. Yes, there we go. Okay, now it's easily lifting. Okay. <laughs> a lot of empty space. There's a little lithium battery down there on the bottom. It looks like it's glued to the back. It's uh, The whole unit is actually pretty heavy, but as you can see, that they've got some pretty massive magnets around these speakers there. And uh, there's that, there's that uh, sort of like a like a fake driver there and then we have a connector going down here for these speakers so this should just disconnect and there we go that came out uh, fairly easily no effort there's that I wonder if these speakers say what kind of uh, this little foam piece is just kind of falling apart there I was hoping we'd be able to read what sort of a uh, homage and well I mean we could we could check the ohms just by measuring it here but you know to see what kind of wattage this little speaker was capable of and it's in there the problem is this foam has left a lot of residue in here and if I scrape it off I'm going to scrape off the all the writing on there as well but if I use something chemical I'll probably end up removing the ink as well so then we can't even tell anyways let's look in here now looks like this board should just slide out So there's a battery connector, so that easily comes off. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could upgrade the battery inside one of these. You just pull this off. Looks like there is a there's a couple of tabs in here. They're kind of like rounded, as you can see. So maybe that was like designed to also maybe house like an 18650 or something in there, and they would just uh, glue it down. But yeah, you could fit a fairly large battery in there if you wanted to. I don't know what the actual life of this, you know, battery life is um, with just that battery. And here is the board. There's a <laughs> really a whole lot of nothing on it. So we can see we got a little buttons up here. There is our on-off switch, and there's the auxiliary input USB. There's a microphone up here, so that would be for if you're wanting to talk on the phone when you receive a call, and this thing is playing. So it looks like pretty much everything inside of this uh, Bluetooth speaker is done by that there and that would uh, you know be like the, the whole the Bluetooth like transceiver and that's the one that's taking care of like doing all the processing from reading the the micro SD card and the USB Let's see the USB yeah it is actually connected there are two lines coming from here going all the way across and uh, they probably go somewhere in there to the to that little microcontroller here so yeah there's really like nothing in here these two I'm gonna have to take a better look at I'm not sure what those are and there's too much of a glare here that I can't really tell what they are I can sort of read them but um, there's a few more connectors here there is in looks like a battery connector there that looks like a speaker 
it says R plus, R minus. So that would be like right plus, right minus. Uh, left plus, left minus. So the speakers do look like they would be stereo. So don't know why this thing just plays in mono then. I guess we'd have to test that to see if, you know, we get individual response from each speaker. Like play something that only, you know, like either plays on a right or, or a left channel. And uh, see what it does there, but yeah, that's it. This here looks like it may be some sort of a power device, probably like a, like a voltage regulator. All right, so here is a much closer look at what we have on this board here. This uh, controller here, it's uh, labeled BDA1724-B. I do not recognize that uh, branding up on the top there, and I could also not find any information whatsoever on this chip. Uh, doing a Google search, it just comes up with, like, um, searching for license plate numbers with those uh, letters and numbers. And, uh, yeah, nothing really useful. And uh, we see that down here, like, this is all the, uh, like, the wireless stuff here. Like, uh, filtering, we got capacitors and whatnot, some resistor right here. So, basically, like, this whole area looks like it's just dedicated for the whole, like, uh, RF... Part of the circuit here is a uh, 26 megahertz crystal there we see that we've got a few lines here running to the micro sd card so that would be for you know controlling that there's a few lines here that are also probably dealing with uh, stuff here in the micro sd let me flip it over real quick and take a look at the other side um okay we don't really see those lines coming down through the bottom anywhere over here so it does indeed look like they are possibly going in here somewhere to these to these pins. We see that there's a, quite a few in use there. Not all of them are in use. We can see that there's a little bit of mask underneath like that one there. There's some mask underneath those two. But yeah, so there's that. Then we have a few other lines here. There's like a set of three that we see right here that kind of run up in this direction. Go to these vias. And then I've already sort of traced these out. I looked at the other side. They come up to here. And this is not a voltage regulator, so I was wrong about that. This is an F25L04PA. This is a, a 4 megabit uh, flash ROM. So I have a feeling that the voices that play when, you know, you switch modes or whatever are probably stored on this uh, flash memory here. So either removing this or swapping it out will probably... Well, I mean, that's probably what they do. They just, like, or, like, program it so that, you know, it has, like, whatever voices in whatever language you know that that they wanted to play in so this was like english and you know so it's playing voices in english so this could i guess in theory or technically be you know reprogrammed and have it play something else when it starts up when uh, when you switch modes so that looks like that's what uh, these lines here are doing they're just actually seeing this, this little serial flash there got a few other lines here some of these are going to be for the analog audio like output and input as we see the uh, microphone that's soldered to these contacts there the this one here looks like it'd be the ground and then the other one that comes up goes to this little capacitor and then kind of goes off in this direction and right to the input so basically this little chip is taking care of like doing the the amplifying for this mic and everything so that means that there's going to be either like one or maybe two lines that go off in this direction so that means that these are going to be the audio amplifiers and let's see they are labeled 8002d i found some little amplifiers that were made by analog devices that also have 8002 but they don't seem to be audio power amplifiers it looks like they're uh, like signal amplifiers or something they're they're capable of up to like 600 megahertz or something like that only like 50 milliwatts so that's not these because these are being used for the, the actual speaker, so these are power amplifiers. However, after a little bit more searching, I did find a data sheet for some other devices here that are labeled 8002 from a company called Income Technology. And if we look at the application circuit diagram, we see that pin 4 would be the audio input. And sure enough, if we look at the, the board here, these are pin 4 right here on both of these amplifiers. So each speaker is being driven by one amplifier, and the audio comes in through, there's a capacitor here. It goes through a little resistor, and then it goes to the input. 
So our audio is coming in from here. It splits off to both sides, so of course it's going to be mono. There's no separate audio signals being fed into both of these amplifiers. Like, we're not getting left and right, you know, to, to each amplifier. We're just getting a single audio input. So that's why our audio uh, plays in mono. So this via here comes up to here through the, the bottom side. It just kind of comes uh, up this way. Goes to another via, and I have not traced it out from there yet. So let me see, flip it over. I believe it was, where did it go? Let's see, okay, so it comes up through here, goes this way, goes across, comes this way. Okay, so it goes underneath all these uh, buttons here. Uh, I'm probably going to have to, like, ohm it out, but maybe it's that one there? Not sure. Let's see. Okay, so I ohmed it out. It actually comes up to the fourth pin up right here from the, from the right, which would be... 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12... Okay, so if we have 12 there, so that means that this would be 24. So that would be 24, 23, 22, and 21. So pin 21 is the audio output. And I'm wondering if this is a ground here. Maybe this is like, say, pin left, or, you know, like left, and maybe right on that side. I don't know for sure. There's a way we can check. And actually, let's verify that if that's ground or not. I will touch the metal casing of the SD. If we get continuity between the case here and this big via right there, then that would mean that this is ground. So let's see. <laughs> of course we get nothing. All right, so that is not a ground that's hooked up directly to the, the rest of the grounding on this board, but it actually comes up this way comes up to here, goes across, what's that one? No, sorry, comes up to here, to this via, it goes to this capacitor, these capacitors are connected in series, and then that's connected to, like, this area here with all these vias, and that's connected to the ground on the audio jack, so yeah, it is a ground of sorts for the, for the audio jack here, but the audio jack is grounded directly to to the rest of the ground. So it's just being coupled with these capacitors, uh, apparently. And I've traced the USBs. The two lines from the USB come up to here. And obviously these are for the, the SD card. So, I mean, I, I, I would think that this would have possibly stereo output. I don't see why they would only limit it to mono. So what we could do, though, is we could hook up the battery like play something through the phone, like, you know, hook it up there and see if we're getting audio from any of the other lines over here, like this one here that doesn't... I mean, I, I, I'm i not saying that it's not being used, it's just nothing comes out to here, although, you know, it could have a trace going underneath it and then maybe like another via there. Although it wouldn't be in this area because there's like a bunch of like grounding going on there. There's another one that come, that comes off here, but that looks like it's all got stuff to do from like this side so I don't know let's see let's see if we get audio from any other pin other than pin 21 right there okay here's how we're gonna do it we're gonna use this little one now because we can and because I can actually get everything in the shot here I've hooked up the the ground clip to the casing right here on the USB connector and I've put a capacitor on the end of this clip here just because this thing is only a DC coupled so if I hook it up to anything that has any sort of offset the thing goes goes off the scale there and we can't see it so at least with this capacitor it gives us a, a bit of AC coupling here so if I touch it to the audio line that's coming to the amplifiers I have some uh, music playing on my phone here and I have it hooked up to the USB we can see that we're getting audio there so that's uh, the audio that's playing directly into the and um I need a lot of noise here because I can't get like a fairly reliable connection there, but there we go. So we can see we are getting an audio waveform there, so we are getting audio to there. If I hook this up to that pin 21, we can see that we have audio there as well. If I could touch it, there we go. However, if we hook up the other pin, that would be a pin, what, 23? If I touch it to that, 
There's uh, absolutely nothing on that pin. So yeah, there's no audio coming from there. If I touch it to the one next to that, there's no audio there. So I kind of poked a little already, and I saw absolutely nothing. So it looks like maybe this uh, IC is just uh, mono output after all. I was just kind of hoping maybe there was a some other pin that also had audio coming out of it but yeah I couldn't find anything and that I mean it'd be nice if we could have found like a data sheet for that IC but of course that didn't happen so no idea what some of those pins are supposed to be but yep as far as I can tell that is the only pin that has any audio output so yeah this thing is a uh, basically just doomed to operate in mono before we wrap this up, I just wanted to try one more little thing here. I currently have it turned off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the lead from this resistor that I've clipped to the the little scope here. We're going to hook it up to pin number two on that flash uh, little device right there, and let's see how it accesses or if it's spitting out any data when this thing uh, first powers up. That would kind of indicate that maybe you know that's where the the voice prompts are, are coming from. So I'm going to hook it up to pin 2 right here. And luckily these are spaced out enough that I'm not really going to short out anything. And now I will power it on. And if I could keep that on there. Okay, let's see. Mode. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw that there's definitely something coming out of there so yeah it looks like it just uh plays the audio directly off of the flash rom so that's uh pretty interesting i could see a little bit of a uh, potential for hackability regarding uh changing what you know audio actually plays out of that thing and uh i don't know i guess maybe you could even have it play something even longer so well i guess that's that really not a lot to see inside this little thing so, hope that was kind of interesting. Thanks for watching once again, guys. Uh, good seeing you guys again. And uh, see you guys around the bench.